I am a woman phenomenally. Phenomenal woman? That's me, Maya Angelou. Welcome to this segment of the Afrocentris podcast, The Woman, Her Story, and Her Impact, where I get to speak to women from across the globe, sharing their stories and how they are impacting their world. Coming to you every Wednesday, 4 p.m. GST. Of course, with your favorite show host, The Energetic EJ. So, make it a date with me every Wednesday. The Afrocentris Podcast, proudly African. Hello guys, and welcome to yet another episode of The Woman, Her Story, Her Impact. Every woman needs to listen or watch this particular episode. So you want to do well to share the link with every woman you know regardless of the challenges that we had there i had to jump on this one because you know the people were in town for a short while they had to go the next day i didn't have all my equipment with me but i had to jump on it so i had to improvise so please this is not my natural you know (laughs) production but yes please bear with me on this particular one listen to the message and i'll see you at the end of the episode Hello guys and welcome to today's episode of the Afrocentris podcast and especially this segment, The Woman, Her Story and Her Impact. But guess what? Today we have the women because I am speaking to two powerful women from Ghana. Yes, this is not the usual, so permit me and please pardon whatever you know is going to happen here because this, I had to jump on this. Like, this beautiful woman traveled miles and miles away to be here and I'm like, no way, we're not leaving this town until we get an interview with them. So regardless of the circumstances, please pay attention to the message that we'll be talking about today because we're here for you women, right? So if you're a woman, please draw your screen closer to you now. Grab your cup of tea, your cup of coffee, or your bottle of water. You know how we do it, right? And let's dive into the conversation today because we're going to be meeting two powerful women and we are going to be talking around being a branch manager in the banking finance uh, banking sector but of course you know we have to see know them first right we have to meet our guests first to know about their stories and how they are currently impacting their world i am the energetic ej and i'm delighted that you're here again this week all right so sit back relax as we dive into the conversation Fantastic. How are you today? Thank you very much, Energetic EJ. <laughs> <laughs> and Mama Genevieve, yes, how me. are you? I'm blessed. And how are you too? I am fantastic. And thank you for granting this, you know, interview. Um, it's such beautiful thing to see, you know, women like you having that heart for women. I mean, we've been in conversation before the camera came on. And I just love what I'm hearing, the way the both of you are just talking about, you know, your experiences. You both have similar experiences, right? And I love the way that you both are already thinking like, okay, what can we do to help the women that we are connected to? And I am just like, wow, I want to be around such women. Women who look after other women. Women who are looking, how can we fix the crowns? of other women rather than thinking of pulling anybody down. So it's mm-hmm. such a pleasure to have you here today. Okay. I'll start with you, oh. Madam Genevieve. <laughs> Madam Genevieve, yes. I know that you currently are planning to launch this book. Like you just wrote this book mm-hmm. and he's called it The Diary of a Branch Manager, right? But before we dive into what this is all about, can we meet you for a few minutes? Who is Genevieve? Duncan. Oh, Genevieve is a very simple young lady from Ghana, um, born to a royal home. Um, so my father is a chief, and I'm Aguna Jiakwa. My mom is also um, a simple young woman who has grown to become a pillar for me and mm. for my siblings. And um, I'll say whatever has happened in my life. The credit goes to my parents because I think God ordained them to be my parent for a purpose. Mm. And I would say that um, I'm somebody who believes in possibilities. And I believe so much in God 
and I always say that whatever you believe in, I believe in God. Whatever you believe in, believe in it and be strong with your faith. Mm. Because for me, I think we are called to purpose. And when you are blessed to identify your purpose on time, it allows you to work well. Mm. And so basically, Jennifer is a very simple young Ghanaian woman who is very committed to her cause and her purpose to why she's on this earth. Hmm, I love it. I love it. She is a young woman who's committed to a purpose. And that is so fantastic because once you know your purpose, you know your why. It's just not easy, but it becomes very particular because you're now more intentional because you know this is why I'm here. Thank you for that sweet and beautiful introduction. So I'm going to go to you, Madam Audrey. So who is Audrey? Let's know you. I call myself Affable Audrey. Affable Audrey. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Tell us about it. <laughs> because I love people, you know, mm. and uh, I love to be cheerful and I love to connect with people. Uh, Audrey is very passionate about people development. I love to see, or I'm very passionate about unlocking people's potential because I believe that in every life there is potential mm. unfortunately not many people have been able to discover their potential and are working it out to make a difference mm. so I believe that God has gifted me to unlock that in people so when I connect with you for a short while I'm able to engage you in a manner where by the time we are done you'll be able to know who you are mm. and I'm blessed with um, a beautiful family I'm married to a reverend minister and we have four beautiful children, three girls and one handsome boy. Mm. I work with Absa Bank Ghana and currently I'm the head of SME, agency banking and partnership. Within the banking sector, you know, I believe strongly that there's a lot more support that we can give to the business community mm. and uh, I'm using my role to extensively build capacity of SMEs as well as financially support those that are ready for debt funding. That was such a fantastic introduction. I love it. Like, in fact, this this episode is special, really. Um, just take it, it's special because first of all, I have two powerful women in the room and then they are like just already capturing the essence of this segment. They're telling us a bit of themselves and how they are impacting their world. But I'm going to go back and forth in between the two because I love to listen to people's story. There is a reason that you decided to choose this path that you were on. Mm -hmm. I would like to, you know, have a glimpse, maybe not everything, but I would like to have a glimpse into that. Like, why did you choose or why are you so passionate about other women? Because you could have chosen to just want to be everything you want to be because you just want to be a powerful woman but then you've gone beyond just being it's about you and now you're looking out to how can you support women i know you have about more than one you know hub or women community that you support right you are you even flew in all the way here to support a women's community and to be you know to to get an award for the good work that you are doing and also know that you know recently you're part of the board for the ladies in business magazine that's that's amazing right so tell me what's your story why did you choose to focus on women what's your story hmm. i think i started by talking about purpose hmm. so i for the past years i'll say for the past few years maybe more than a decade i've been glued to the fact that women are supposed to collaborate that is what i think and that is what i know because i think that um my strength might be different from audrey's strength mm. but there is beauty in collaboration so when we collaborate and she taps or leverages upon what i have and i also leverage upon what she has it makes the world a beautiful place and i think from where we come from in terms of cultural background women have been made to think that um, we are still in the era where cultural practices should allow us to be very laid back and and I have been blessed to move away from that narrative 
And like I said, my mother, although she's not really a highly educated woman, she's, she's going to school, but she's not like a professor or a doctor like I am. But I think she taught me a few things. Mm -hmm. And I realized that there is power in collaboration, simple put. And that is what probably has made me so passionate about supporting other women, pulling women together, and making women believe in ourselves that, look, we have all it takes mm -hmm. to get to wherever we want to get to. Mm -hmm. But one caution that I always put across is that I am not so much of the equality advocate. Mm -hmm. I am of the view that I have been blessed with my potentials. I'm not equal to a man. I'm different from a man. Mm -hmm. But if I tap into my God-given potentials, and I support my partner, who is the man. Whatever God has blessed me with and has blessed him with, leveraging on those strengths will become bigger and better. Absolutely. So to the men out there <laughs> who are not ready to support women's cause, and that's why I say he for she. Mm. I love men who support the cause of women. women. Because you see, it's a partnership. And God in his own wisdom Maybe that way. men and women for yes. a purpose. Yes. So I would say that I'm a woman, but I love men who are so much in support and in collaboration mm -hmm. with us to see us to the next level and to see us at the top, at the corporate rooms, in terms of boardrooms, when we are doing our businesses, supporting us to get the business to um, a place where the business has to be. Mm -hmm. So basically, collaboration for me is key. Mm -hmm. So that is why probably I am very focused and very passionate about oh, anything true. women. Mm. But the end of it all is I want women to be financially stable, financially empowered, so that we can support our men and grow better homes, better nations, better communities, and make the world a better place. place. Absolutely fantastic. You see, when you mentioned um, the fact that women generally especially from back home culture and all of that there is a place that they feel women should be but we have moved far away the women of now have moved and it just brought a conversation that i had with another you know group of women that i am with and we recently just finished um, reviewing a book mm -hmm. written by juma cardinal called woman as god intended mm -hmm. and you even just brought out something that we learned from that book like we all have our roles mm -hmm. the men have their roles mm -hmm. the women have their roles and there is a reason god mm -hmm. created it like that we are both supposed to dominate and rule over the world not over each other not drag position with each other we all have our roles and the earlier we embrace those roles even though we're different but we're supposed to work together and it's just so beautiful when you mention that thank you thank you so much you. now i'm going to pick it up from where she mm -hmm. said and ask you when she said we are not longer where the society think we should be as women right we've moved mm -hmm. from the would I call it a box mm -hmm. or a template that feels like, oh, women should be quiet. Women should be behind the scenes and all of that. But look at you, ma'am. Look, like You are in the position of power, being given the ability to support other women, to come to the table, to bring what you have, the value that you carry. What would you say plays a role in pushing the women, maybe some women who are still behind the scene and still in that formal box, mm. so to say, that they've been placed in to tell them, ladies, we have moved and you need to wake up and own your power. Yeah, so that's a, that's a, a, a very good uh, question. And uh, for every woman that is uh, watching us, what I would say is that the world has changed mm. significantly. Absolutely. And a lot of things have changed as well, including women rising up you know some years back women were sort of behind the scenes mm. you get me but now voices have spoken and voices continue to speak mm. in favor of women and what this means is that if you're a woman and you rise up you come out of your shelf and you focus on your personal development and you build your skills, you strengthen your capabilities as a woman, there's a place for you. Mm. You get me? There's yes. a place for you. And I appreciate women that have actually braced every odd 
and they have risen to leadership you know very high positions and they are making impact where, wherever they are mm. so there is room for us there are opportunities all around us okay so women must rise up discover who you are like i indicated there are every individual has potential great mm. potentials mm. god has given everyone skills gift that are meant to help us place at place ourselves in a position where we can support others mm. and help build other people so gone are the days where we were seen you know to be in the in kitchen, the kitchen. <laughs> At the table of decision. Exactly, at the table of decision. Mm. And our voices are so important and crucial because there is power in diversity. Any Absolutely. organization that embraces diversity, that brings the women to the table mm. and hear us, they do very well. Research, yes. many researchers have proven that, mm. that when women are part of decision making, mm. that organization prospers, so that organization thrives, mm. and that organization expands and increases and continues to make great impact and strides. Wow, woman, if you are watching this, you better wake up mm. like you count, your voice counts. I don't know what it is or who has lied to you or what has happened to you, and I do not want to discount it your experiences especially because I think that is one thing that really makes women silent. Mm -hmm. there, there are experiences that they've gone through, there are upbringings that they've experienced that have just shut them down and they don't even know mm -hmm. how to find their voices mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to believe in themselves anymore. But like she said, you said something powerful. There is a place for every single one of us out in this world. As long as you're breathing and you're on planet Earth, there is a place for you but you've got to step out exactly. you've got to speak you've got to let people see what you can do and then help is available that's just the truth like like i said earlier when before this conversation started both of these gorgeous women that i have the privilege of sitting down with today were already speaking and the women oh my god like my head is actually like i'm literally having goosebumps right now the women who they are leading are not even in this room and these women are here thinking already like okay how can we support them how can we help them how can we what can we do to provide an enabling environment for them and their businesses and i'm in this room i'm like my god there is a place for you woman rise <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> and, they, and they say something you know you ask them what really is driving her passion yes. for women and I want to say something. About uh, four or five years ago, mm. a woman leader changed my life. Mm. I was a branch manager in one of our branches, very operationally driven. And this woman found or saw potential in me. Mm. And she was looking for head of service excellence for the grant to drive transformation, cultural transformation, mm. people transformation, and also customer experience within the bank. And she found no one but me. And I remember this woman called me and asked me to apply for the role. I was afraid because I did not see myself in that, in that role. role. I didn't feel that I was the right candidate right. for that position because that position immediately uh, takes you to report to the managing director mm -hmm. and then become part of the country management team. Now this woman told me that I will help you. Mm. That statement yeah. that she made, she was the managing director then, all of a sudden drove away the fear in mm. me and then instilled confidence. Immediately I believed in myself that you I am the things. right person for that role and I'm the one that can handle that role excellently. I went for the interview and I got a job. And let me tell you that, you know, later i got to hear that because at that time in our company you know our performance ratings if you get a c you won't even be shortlisted for an interview mm. two years that had been pregnant giving birth to two mm. children mm. constantly mm. two years it was a very difficult moment in my life mm. very difficult so it impacted my performance 
But I heard of that I was a star, I was a rising star doing great things in my company. And then I got into family. Mm. Okay, so that impacted my performance and I got C ratings for two years. Yes, yes. Now, with these ratings, mm. this woman still so decided willing to, to push for exactly me. pull me out of that level mm. to report to her and work with me to uh, advance her course. Wow. And when that happened, I told myself that anytime I find myself in, in a leadership position, position oh, and I have the women. opportunity, the influence, the power, I would support women. Wow. And she didn't end there. She's the only leader that gave me developmental opportunities. Right. She, she helped me sign on to one and a half years executive training wow. in South Africa. Every yes. other month I was going to South Africa. Wow. You can and she exposed me extensively. And through that, I built capacity. Mm. Today, I'm the president of our Women Network Forum in the bank. Wow. And my vision is to see these young people also come rise. up and become great women. I am actually touched by no. what you just said. Because you see, it's the bitter truth that women don't support women. Mm. Majority, yes. And right. they, they have a saying that women are our own enemies, which mm. I personally don't love to believe that. But I think to, an, uh, to a large extent, yeah. women you can say yeah. how you support women. Mm. Yes. And what you just said has really hit something in me. Because you see, unfortunately for us, when we see people in particular circumstances, we judge them. Mm. But you see, you had just come out from two child delivery mm. exactly. and your children were very young very so under normal circumstances like, that will you won't even want to and that is what is happening to a lot of women out there so to the woman out there i would say that look don't allow your current circumstances to 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 be like a stumbling block for you because childbearing is a it's temporal part of thing life. and yeah. it's part of life mm. move away from the fact that i just Give birth. I don't want to go back to school. I have to take care of my children. I think what she did for you has given you that confidence that look, no matter what my circumstances are, when it comes to the job, mm. no excuses. And that's mm. what I say. When yeah. we are called to the boardroom, as we ask for breaking the bias and all that, we ourselves, how prepared are we? Mm. So if I I'm ready to pull you up. Mm. How I prepared know. are you? Mm. If she tried pulling you up and you still said, no, I think mm -hmm. my kids are too young and all that, you wouldn't That's have it. been saying mm. the story. Mm. So God bless her, whoever she is. <laughs> and God bless you for that experience that is making you also want to mm. pull others along. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think that, you see, sometimes some of these uh, positive stories, we even have to mention them. Yes. yes. And it's patients, actually, I know she's oh, the God CEO bless her. of Holland. Holland, oh, oh, my woman is an amazing leader. Mm. A fighter who fights for people, you know, and Beautiful. you know, having said that, we need to support each other. Let mm. me talk about you, you yourself. I'm loving this. I didn't know this woman anywhere. I recently received an award and she was there. Women in finance, women in exactly. yeah, banking and she finance. She was there and she came to speak. I was sitting in front, but I actually saw her, you know, I saw her in a different way. Yeah. And I paid attention to what she said, mm. but I saw greatness in her. So you remember I was looking at you at and, then, yes, yes. and then after the event, she, she came to me or oh, took some pictures with me and all that. And I was wondering, but I don't know this woman, wow. you know, but she, she took a lot of pictures with me. And then just about a week later, she I got a message from a very good friend. I think she passed it through her that there is this award and she wants to nominate me. I am here because of you. Oh you understand? Yeah. Because it is not every woman that would hear some another woman's story mm. and decide that look, I have influence mm. and I have an opportunity to showcase women mm. and then say that let me take you along. Mm. Okay, so you are a very great woman and I admire you for that. Thank you so much Aww. for giving me this access and this visibility. Yesterday's show was amazing. Mm. Beautiful women, all you know, from different countries, glamorously dressed mm. at one room. 
okay, coming for uh, our awards, mm. but you made it possible for me to be. Oh. So women, you see, we must not envy mm. other women when we see them rising. Mm. We must not gossip about them. And I'm saying this passionately because I know that some women, when they see other women rising, they just mm. instead of praising, instead of supporting, instead of helping, they go behind them and begin to gossip about them. Try to, them. Them down. Try to yeah. deflate them yeah. and pull them down. We must move away from that. We are saying that we should break the bias. Let us, within ourselves, let's women, break it, okay. let's break the bias exactly. ourselves yes. before we look up to the men. I'm sure that any time we say break the bias, we are the men. Men. <laughs> <laughs> No, we must first look into ask ourselves, ourselves and ask questions. Who am I being biased towards? Mm. Exactly, mm. towards. Mm. Break that bias. Women, okay. let's break our own biases before we look up to the men to break her. Wow, that bias. this is so beautiful. <laughs> oh, this is so God. beautiful. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I love the passion. Like, I, in this whole mix, I'm the blessed one here. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> right now, let's go quickly to this book. What inspired you to write this? I know you've been in the banking sector for over for about 15 years and now you recently stepped down to go deep into your purpose. Mm. But what inspired this book? Can you tell us a little bit? Um, I'll say that I've been blessed to have done branch management for the past 12 years. And what I realized was there isn't any manual that guides you as a branch manager. Mm. So it's more like you're on your own. If you succeed, perfect mm. if you don't succeed it's in your hands but i think um as we journey in life our experiences matter mm. so i have had an experience it's beautiful to share my experience so that the next person who is a prospective branch manager who is still a branch manager or who is even looking at becoming a banker gets some sort of Guide. Mm. So you know that when it comes to branch management or whatever management it is, I, I think that it talks about branch management, but it's it to all, to all yeah. industries. Mm. And um, I would say that the themes that are in this book, customer experience, is something that everybody needs. Yes. If you want to be profitable That's and you want your business to stand out, you need customer experience. Mm. Operational effectiveness, you need it in your organization. Mm. Team management. It's something that we all need, even Absolutely. in our homes. Absolutely. We need to manage our children, yes. our husbands, or our spouses. And then also when it comes to business development or salesmanship marketing, mm -hmm. every industry needs it. Mm. But I would say that it's a way to say, this is the experiences that made me stand out in the banking industries. The things that I did over the past 12 or 15 years mm -hmm. across two banks, mm -hmm. Commercial Bank and then Fidelity Bank Ghana. These are the experiences and I think that with the perspective from other industry players and practitioners in the banking industry, which adds up to what my experiences have been, mm. it would go a long way to serve as a manual or a tool guide to anybody who is in branch management. And that is why probably mm. I'm like, okay, in a way of sharing knowledge, Absolutely. let me just put a few of my thoughts. Together. I love writing. Mm. So let me put my few thoughts together and then it would help the next generation of bankers or anybody in the financial industry. Fantastic. So that's why I wrote this book. Absolutely. I know you have a little thing to say about this book. No, honestly, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, Honestly, you know, when she was talking, uh, what was running through my mind was that, Jennifer, when I was the head of uh, service excellence in uh, Barclays then, mm. I looked around for a book like this mm. because uh, I wanted the managers to be built up in a manner where they believe in their uh, their role and also understand the fact that they are CEOs of their branches and then also appreciate the fact that it takes service, mm. service experience to actually drive effective branch management. So having gone through your book, honestly, you've done a great job. Thank you. Because it highlights, you know, the key important element that every branch manager must know. If I need, if you had written the book, so yes, yes, but honestly, yes. <laughs> I would have bought it for every single branch manager mm. in the bank. Mm. And therefore, I would encourage every bank, mm. you know, it's a book, it's a must-have book mm. for every bank, mm. okay, for their branch managers, because it will help them 
okay, with the necessary tools and the skills to mm -hmm. manage their branches in a more effective ah. and a professional way. Thank that you is so, so much. beautiful. That's a beautiful endorsement yeah. for me. Right? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. How can people get a copy of this if they want it? Okay, so right here, since we are in Dubai now, mm -hmm. right here in Dubai, um, the best person to contact is ladies in business. Um, right, Ambassador right. Shola, okay. she will have some copies. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on Amazon from next week. Okay. So um, you can also go on Amazon. Amazon okay. In Ghana, it's going to be at the Chartered Institute of Bankers. Oh, okay. And it's also going to be at the Banking College. And they can also visit GenevievePell.com. So www.GenevievePell.com. Okay. You make an order and it will be delivered mm -hmm. wherever you find yourself. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for writing this book. Before we round it off here, I always like to ask, so since we're women here and we're talking to our young ladies, what would you say, I'll ask sure both of you separately, what would you say to a young woman? I mean, now you have spent these years in your career and you're stepping out now. It's more like you're switching up careers, right? What would you say to a lady who is at that point where it feels like they've been in a particular career for a while and now it's time to transition, but it's a bit scary like mm. it's scary like it is. Oof, what's mm. going to happen but you just took the step right mm. so i'm sure there's something that gave you that mm, just go for it can you just give that person the word of encouragement okay so to the woman out there to the young lady out there what i would say is that um first you need to develop yourself you need to be intentional that's the word i want to use be intentional about your personal development if you develop yourself and you get to a point where you have acquired other skills and competences, switching or transitioning from one career to the other. Although, yes, you look at the risk involved and all that, it's not as scary mm. as not preparing before you move. Mm. So I would say that I'm still working. <laughs> I'm not going to sleep, but I'm, I'm working according to purpose, mm. according to what brings me more fulfillment. So... I want to have freedom. I want to have, um, um, I want to control my time. Let me put it like that. So consulting gives me the, the, the freedom to have more time for my family, to have more time for a few other things that matter to me. Mm. So don't just wish that you are out there, mm. you've transitioned. Mm. You need to prepare. Mm. I could have left four years ago. I could have left five years ago, mm. but I had to prepare towards that. So I think when the time comes, you would know that the time is right. Mm -hmm. When you are called to purpose, you don't take steps because you are totally or fully risk-free. Mm. You take that step because you have that. You know that there is a, a superior hand that is, that is guiding you. you. Mm. So when he says it is time, Genevieve, you have you no reason <laughs> to say I don't have enough money in the bank account. You take that leap of faith. Mm. But first of all, be prepared mm. and be intentional about your personal development. Mm. Develop yourself such that today, if let's say I don't have any work to consult or I don't have any consulting job, I can write. Mm. I can train. Mm. I do stuff with my hands. I know how to bake. I know how to cook. I know how to do fascinators. I know how to look good and make other women look good so i think we should develop ourselves we should be intentional about personal development wow i love and, uh, it dr genevieve you yes. know just to add uh, just a, a little mm. to what you just said you know you said you can do several things meaning that you've been able to identify what you are good at mm. so if you are at a stage where you are thinking that one day you would want to step out it's good you know i've been at that stage before you have to reflect and ask yourself these questions you know what you are good at okay there is something that i believe we are individually good at mm. so if you are good at let's say baking whatever you are good at you discover start now, now we're working on it now, so you can still be doing your work mm. and then you'll be baking exactly. And then at the right time, when you have you know gotten to a point where if you leave your job and you continue with your baking, you can start. You do that, and then also the Bible says that in the multitude of counsel, mm. there is safety. Mm. So when you get to that stage and you don't know what to do, seek counsel from the right. And I was going to you just you just kind of you are a woman of the spirit right yes. here. Because, I know you just you just started going into it. The question I was
was going to ask you was mm. you talked about you know you shared with us your story of how somebody spoke for you mm. dragged you up and, and you know just say you are good for the job mm. and i was going to say what are you going to say to women who are in power mm. to say how can you be more intentional mm. about pulling the people you see potentials in and you know pulling them up what would you say to women in power like you yeah so i think that uh, just as that woman i spoke about was able to discover me mm. you know we should pay attention to people okay what people do around us and as leaders we should be interested in people who are who are versatile okay who are gifted they are there they are all around us once we identify people who are going over and above what they expected to do you know you should be interested in such people because they might they are manifesting just a little bit of their potential mm. but the greater one is inside waiting for you to help them unlock it mm. and reveal it to the world okay so once you discover those people believe in them and sometimes you know let me use this platform to say that as leaders we need to take risk on people exactly. we always want to promote those that we think merit or really, they are at the mm. very you know end of it all but there are people once they manifest a little bit of their potential mm. and you discover it mm. even if you feel that they are not where they are supposed to, to be. be to do that job take that risk Build the because when you there. do that i can assure you mm. those people will not fail you not i didn't feel that woman in mm. fact i was determined to work and to do my job in a manner that would make that woman proud and, and that sure is what she's so I proud did. of you you know so wherever exactly. she finds herself she would she'll be so proud of you exactly yes. you know, so let us learn to believe in people mm -hmm. and then help them when we have to we shouldn't see it as competition no, no, she's no, going no, to be no, known no. more than me she's going to be visible more than me women should not see it like and that. we all have you know i believe in destiny helpers as well mm. and, you know god brings certain people to connect to us. help us to become who we have to i see you as oh. one destiny helper because if it were not for you i wouldn't be here so i think that sometimes we also get a sense that ek there's something about ek that mm. requires my help mm. and i have to help it i should selflessly help that person and women let's help each other oh. let's support each other gosh I'm, I'm 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 literally at the verge of tears right now because the, the the positive vibe right, in this yeah. room is so strong and i am in the right place thank you god like seriously <laughs> i am in the right place i am in the company of of amazing women and these are the kind of women that we want to have connections to right so i'm just going to do a quick shout out at this point to ambassador helen addition addition on the because <laughs> you are the reason this women are here you are the reason i you know got to know them or they get to know me and this is happening now so shout out to you mama shows as i call you god bless you keep doing what you're doing keep being amazing keep lifting others up and i believe that god will keep lifting you up all right thank you guys like this has been an amazing amazing episode ah! we went to ghana ah! <laughs> me and my ghana people hey, Charlie, hey. Okay, Ghana, wait, come, 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 get me. Oh, see, my mamas are here. I want to come to Ghana again. I miss Ghana, Charlie. I miss you, people. I want to come. Thank you so much for being a part of today's episode. Until I come your way again next time with another amazing, amazing episode sharing the stories of women and how they are currently impacting their world. I am the energetic EJ, and this is the Afrocentrist so podcast. Yeah. <laughs> well done, EJ. Thank you so much. All right, guys, thank you for watching this particular episode. I hope you found it valuable as much as I did. All right, I enjoyed every bit of this episode, both during the live recording and during the editing segment. So please, if you found this really valuable, do remember to share with somebody in your network, especially a woman who should watch it and take all the lessons that were shared in it. And remember, if you're yet to subscribe to this YouTube channel, please do that because we would love to continue sharing valuable content with you. 
Thank you so much for being a part of our journey so far. And also remember to support us here with the work that we do so that we can produce more amazing content. Okay, support us by clicking on the link in the description of this video that says buy me a coffee forward slash the Afrocentrist. Yes, buy us a cup of coffee for as low as $5 and we would really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you next week. Bye.